something went on here, something went on there. And this time on TNT. Why you buds need to be careful in the ocean. We play the top five salesman jams. And a brand new game, Reno or Bino. That's all coming up right now on TNT. It's number 81. 81. We've got the cutest little 81. 1981. I'm putting together maybe the best weekend of the summer so far. I don't want to jinx it. Really? Yeah. Like it's been a spectacular start and you're right midway? Yeah. Well, it's, it's Sunday early afternoon. Um, yesterday we went to Pride in Halifax, which was really fun. Took the girls. Mm-hmm. It was a big, long parade. Lots of dancing. And, um, you know, they really enjoyed that. Then yeah. we stayed in the city last night because it was the Mr. D rap party. Oh, so I right partied on. in the pool with the girls. And then last night was the party. It was the Pride pool party combo. So you got to, uh, it's all wrapped up. Was uh, Everybody was there saying goodbye. Yeah. I mean, Mr. D does something that's a little unorthodox, but it's kind of nice. They have the rap party like midway through the run. So oh, there, okay. there's still a few weeks left. But what, what that alleviates is the melancholy of, man, I'm never going to see you again, man. So there's yeah. no heaviness. And it also keeps people in check because you have to show up at work Monday morning and look people in the eye. So any of these yeah. Hail Mary, like, you know what's up. We're feeling each oh. other, aren't we? Like, none of that goes yeah. down. Do you know That's what I mean? Good. But it, it, I never, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I, I uh, always... But then there's still that feeling when it's over that there isn't a party almost, which I know. is a little weird. Well, that's the downside. But the truth is, because a lot of the actors come from um, Toronto, they would probably leave and not be here for the party. So this way, at least in theory, people oh, are still okay. in that's town. that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, it was fun, nice. man. And the girls are at the age now, the girls are at the <laughs> age now where it's like um, Club Med for small people. Like any other small people around, it's like, let's party. So there's they this just, ball of youth on the dance floor. That's great. And the uh, at the hotel, it was just rocking in the pool? Yeah. it's We were staying at a hotel that doesn't have a pool, but it has a deal with a sister hotel where you can walk down the block and use their pool. I got it. So we pulled See, that move a couple times, and they were all fired up. Is it warm out? As hot as it is here? It's like uh, minus 40 with the Humidex here in Toronto. It's not that um, but it is warm. It's like nice Nova Scotia summer with a breeze. Do you guys have air conditioning? Yeah, but I mean, it, outside it, it is literally uh, taint gravy, fry and egg hot. Yeah, there's this, like by my house. There's this uh, new. They put in this brand new park at the waterfront, so it's this big crazy splash pad and all this stuff. But they have this boardwalk as well around the side of the lake, and there's this like. Uh, brass turtle you know what i mean like sitting on the ground there's all little stuff oh little man trees made of uh you know like rusted steel and all this cool artwork everywhere but there's this like brass turtle and uh it, it just sits there and bakes in the sun how but hot tur- is that map yeah it's a turtle that's on the ground and it's like sitting up so every kid around right away runs to it and it has this like caution tape. A kid like burnt their leg and had to go to the hospital earlier. Oh my A couple gosh. weeks ago. And like, if you sit on, like, it's on fire. Like, they got it. It's not going to last where it is because they put caution tape around. Like, that's Donnie, slip don't... out to Richmond Hill and grab that turtle, will you? We had four complaints this week. It's not working, buddy. When, when you're when you're a two year old kid, three year old, when you're just walking, that's and you see a turtle sitting there in the summertime. That's the first thing you do is walk on it. And when you're a parent, you think, well, that's what that's for. So it's just it's almost like having like an electric electric uh, you know uh, open line in the ground because it's on. It's literally a you get first degree burns within seconds on the thing. <laughs> it's a frying pan crazy? turtle. Maybe so it's it a fall a to spring turtle. Like imagine it's always got like a a wet towel on it that's got ice. Ice them down. Maybe yeah. they should put him like that guy who had the disease. <laughs> they should put him <laughs> in know, a this, pool of ice. This this is this episode should be actually uh, dedicated to that guy 
sitting in the ice, your buddy yeah. in PEI. Because I, I, you know, I tell that story maybe once every two and a half months. I wish we could figure out the, well, I guess a simple Google search would resolve that, but figure out the name of the ailment and what exactly yeah. it is. Because in my kid brain, <laughs> I kind of like, it was enough to just hear like, yeah, man, he can never, <laughs> he can never cool down properly because his thermometer is broken. Um, but, but in, in my the adult winter, brain, I'm like, well, uh, go on. Explain that in a little more depth than I can't. In the winter, he could wear no shirt and it's never cold, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. really, Walk though? a t-shirt, minus 30. No, seriously? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> like, yeah. he, uh, he didn't have a coat most of the time in the winter? No, I mean, it, it, was, it was always the legend of this guy. I don't even remember his name. <laughs> um, but no one knows the perils of turtles more than me. <laughs> I, did I tell you one tried to have intimate relations with me in Hawaii? A turtle did? A sea turtle, yeah. They're frisky. Oh, and what are you, oh you're messing around with it? No, oh, I was mining my own beeswax and swimming, and it, I thought, well, there's a curious little fella. In the ocean? Yeah. Like one of those huge yeah, sea turtles? Yeah, a sea turtle. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Like, but you're not, you're not, that's not funny or anything. You're like, at that point, you're scared, Well, aren't I'm going to tell you something. I wasn't scared at the time. I just thought, <laughs> well, he's friendly. He's a awful no, tame those, little guy. They'll snap your arm off with that mouth. Well, I didn't even realize that we got to first base <laughs> until I got back to the hotel and I was watching the news and I was like, yeah, dude, if you're in the water, um, it's mating season and turtles can be frisky, so keep your distance. I was like, that's what happened. So what, was it like just chasing you? <laughs> like, it was, I don't know if it was chasing me, but it, it, like, it <laughs> wanted to hang. No, but was it? Did it touch you at all? Was it like trying yeah, to get on your sure back? Yeah, sure did. It did. Yeah, like it, it wasn't. Um, it didn't feel erotic. <laughs> no, but like they're big, man, aren't they? Like, <laughs> yeah, it was probably back? it's probably three feet. Like thorax is probably three <laughs> yeah, feet like, by a couple feet wide. I just, how are you not scared? Of shit? Listen, well, this like, was the just... best part. So I was telling this story to a group of people, and this guy says, "That's nothing." I'm like, oh, here we go. He told yeah. a story allegedly about his friend that his friend was scuba diving in a wetsuit that was like just the shorts, not the whole pants. <laughs> yeah. And a dolphin's bird got caught under his shorts and the dolphin pinned him up against the dock and had its way with him. No. In front of terrified tourists, <laughs> he was watching from the by dock. A, <laughs> yeah, and when the dolphin finished, dolphin. it finished like eight liters of dolphin goo, and it no. <laughs> and it just exploded in his little shorts wetsuit. Oh, no. <laughs> So, I know, but did it was it penetrating him? Well, it was penetrating like his his suit. His leg. Yeah, like it, like its bird was under between. <laughs> The shorts and his skin. So he's feeling like a pin needle on his leg? Yeah, but it, the dolphin pinned them against the dock, and, like, they're strong. Yeah. Like Mickey Rourke pinball machine style. Yeah, it was nine and a half weeks. Like, folks, be careful in the ocean, I guess is what we're saying. <laughs> what the hell? Can you imagine the moments after... The dolphin finishes and <laughs> swims away, comes back, yeah. and you're trying to keep it remotely cool, like just climbing out of the a, ladder. You're getting a white orange Julius poured up your <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what butterfly laughter is. Yeah. That's oh, right. flipper. <laughs> They're so happy, but it's because they have their way with tourists all the time. Yeah. I didn't know that they could do, and not to mention, like, force themselves upon you and, like, pin you. But in fairness, maybe it was like, a, oh, what's happening here? Oh, all right, we're doing this? And that's, like, maybe the dolphin has to reach a certain level of the point of no return, as they say in Young Drivers of Canada. So you, I, you weren't in a wetsuit, were you, and the tur turtle was No, around? I was just in board shorts. <laughs> Man, I just don't understand how you didn't care, really. Well, I, I was actually working on a TV show shortly after, <laughs> well, at the time when Steve Irwin died. And the day after that, I had to go in a tank with stingrays and as part of the TV show I was doing. And they're, they do the same thing. They're very naturally curious, and they will swim up the length of you, like, really close just to check you out. Yikes. 
And maybe that, like that, maybe in the ocean, I'm a babe. <laughs> yes, but what? All this sea life seems to want to push up on me. Yeah, but then they can stab you and kill you, and well, that's the it, other scary part. Yes, but it sounds like in the case of the stingrays, like that was a pretty um, unlikely incident yeah. for Steve. And and according to this gentleman, anyway, in Hawaii, he said. Um, it would have to feel threatened or provoked. Um, so maybe, maybe just naturally through the course of Steve Irwin's work, he was, um, you know, uh, too aggressive. It or, maybe, yeah, stirring yeah. it up. Maybe. Yikes! But yeah, I didn't know that's what was happening with the turtle till I saw it on the news. Do not yeah. get close to the turtles because they want to get things going. That is crazy stuff. So here's what happened last wow. week. I was in Toronto, as you know. We did the news yeah. talk show together. We had a meeting. And yep. I was, was on my way times. to the airport, and you yep. said, why don't you take the subway, Bob? I'm going to take the subway. And the rocket. You can take the rocket from the end of yep. the subway line to the airport. And so yep. I had a bit of time, and I thought, that sounds fun. Look at me in Toronto doing toronto stuff. Yeah. So you and I take the and subway a- up as far as wherever that was, Bloor, I guess. Yep. And then I get off, and I'm going west. Yeah. All the way to Kiel. Kipling. 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 Yeah. So this, um, he he was wearing a tank top and had a beard, but seemed you know fresh, as my wife would say. Um, okay. Very tentative, kind of soft spoken guy. Yeah. Taps me on the shoulder because I'm like, that's not a knife. This is a knife when I'm in the city, Paul Hogan yeah. styles. Yep. And so immediately I, I kind of brace, and he says. Hey, um, could you tell me if um, if this subway goes to Kipling? Really soft-spoken. I was like, okay. oh, uh, I don't know. Let me ask another friendly Torontonian. Asked somebody if this goes to Kipling. They said yes. So I relate to the dude. Yeah, apparently it does go to Kipling. So he gets on and I get on and we're standing side by side. <laughs> and you're and, like, damn, I'm going to Kipling, but I'm not going to tell him that. So, sorry, he must have been going to Kiel. Does Kiel come before oh, Kipling? Oh, okay. Yeah, because right. he yeah, got yeah, off yeah. before yes. me. Okay. Um, just like the dolphin and that guy. Yeah. So um, we're standing beside each other. It was moist that day. Mm -hmm. I take out some wet ones, some like travel wipes. I offer him one. Moist. (laughs) Moist. He's very appreciative. Was that David Usher? Was that his band? Yeah. Yeah. But that was also just how that guy on Johnny Carson used to hear Johnny Carson. Moist. I don't remember that. But if I was ever introducing that band, that's how I'd do it. When I think, hear yeah, moist, yeah. I think Betty Crocker cake. That's one of the words that I don't love. Yeah. Um, All right. So, so the guy, so I give him a, a wet one. And um, I, I, he says to me, are you from Mississauga? Like he seemed more <laughs> overwhelmed at being in the city than I did. And I was like, no, I'm actually it's from like, Nova Scotia, just going home. He said, oh. It's like, this is like Andrea and them. That's one of the places he's <laughs> It kind of was. Going to Mississauga. It kind of was. So, uh, through the course of casual conversation, I said, I'm going to the airport, going home to Nova Scotia. Uh, where are you going? And he said, I'm going home to Mississauga. I said, oh, do you live or do you work in the city? And he said, no, I was just at family court. I'm like, oh, oh cool. Family court. Okay. Um, so he How says, old is he again? Huh? How old is he again? Uh, 26. Okay. With gusts up to 28, somewhere All in right. there. But, sure. but you have to understand, like, real soft-spoken, like, kind of a gentle cat. But if yeah. you looked at him, you might make a couple of assumptions about him. Okay. Um, so uh, I said, oh, uh, you're at family court. And he said, yeah, um, kind of a long story, but my ex had a baby in March, and she won't let me see it. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry sorry to hear that. Uh, what's its name? And he said, I, I can't pronounce it because I've never heard it said out loud, but I've read in court documents that its name is... <laughs> Of Avilla, A V I L L A, or Avia, and he wasn't sure. I was like, oh, cool. <clears throat> so I didn't want to press too much, but he offers that. Um, he went to jail, and so his ex used that against him um, as far as not getting access to the baby. But really, what she did is got him to move in to her place with all his stuff, and then she kicked him out a month later, so she kept all the stuff and is now blocking him from seeing the baby. I was like, oh, wow, well, you know, breakups can be messy. And he said, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really going to kill her. And I was like, "Uh, excuse me? He 
was living oh, with man. the girl. He was working for the landlord of the building that they lived in, who was a friend of hers. After a month, he wanted to be paid. The girl said, I'm going to go ask the landlord for your money. She goes downstairs. He comes down to say, where's my money? And she says, get away from me. You're never going to see this baby. And he says, never going to see the baby. I will effing kill you. Mm -hmm. So the girl and the landlord witness him say this. So two months later, the cops show up on his doorstep and arrest him. And he says, you know, it was two months ago. I just said it. I obviously wasn't going to do it. So they put him in jail for a week. Like, Jeez. wow, you can't really um, uh, judge a book by its cover. Here was this meek, mild little lamb. And his delivery was like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't really going to kill her. When he said that, did you look up at the blur line to see how far? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We right still there. had a few you stops just... to go. And then he dropped <laughs> yeah, no, this on me. up there. You, that point, you're looking. He said, oh, um, I'm throwing out the, oh, man, I got to get out of here. Right? I know. Uh, I was thinking, should I stop. get off at Jane and take a taxi? <laughs> um, but I was still dazzled by the girl at the shop there. So he casually mentions in passing that it wasn't his first time in jail. Um, the first time he was in jail was when he um, he went to jail for uh, two counts of attempted murder. And I was trying to sound casual, but I was like, oh, uh, how how did that happen? And he said That's he was with luck. a girl for seven years and he caught her uh, with his best friend. And that would be upsetting, undoubtedly. Um, so yeah. he did what some of us would do and tried to stab his best friend. And yeah, she you know, stepped in between and he ended up stabbing them both. Um, so that was two counts of attempted murder. All right. And this is the quote. But the good news is, because I had slit my own throat three times, it, they were able to call it a crime of passion. So my sentence was greatly reduced. Even though I was convicted for two counts of attempted murder, he, he was as cavalier as I am sharing this information. He's like... At this point, though, I mean, you're still was, like... At this point, you're like, okay, Dundas West. Uh, do you I know what I was doing? I was thanking my lucky stars... That I had offered him a piece of gum, offered him a yeah. wet one, didn't judge him based on any prior knowledge of him, obviously. And yeah. it's just a good reminder that, man, you never know who you're talking to or what they're going through. So he did 16 months the first time, and he did a week the second time. Is there a jail that starts with Mick? Like Mick, McMurphy Farms or something? Thank, I'm thankfully not that aware of all the jails. McAteer Correctional Facility, something like that. I said, so is jail like really what I would assume it is? And he said, well, you really just kind of stick to yourself no matter what anyone says to you. But I really enjoyed my time in there because um, I got to read a lot and, um, you know, learned a lot about myself. It depends who you get for a roommate, but it's not that bad. Yeah. And then you're trying to figure out how I can get off at Ossington and maybe take the bus over to... Well, it was almost scarier play. because... It could have gone sideways, I guess, at any moment, yeah. but he was so gentle and kind of matter of fact about it. And so I just said, well, man. Exactly. Man, That's all the reason to get, get the hell off at Lansdowne. He must have a switch. But he said <laughs> yeah. his girlfriend, this is the second time she's done this because she has a nine-year-old and she did it to another dude. And his eyes clouded over a little bit when he was saying that. Yeah. But I was like, man, oh, well, it's good for you. you never know what life's going to throw at you, bud, and, and trying to... Uh, get your son in your life that's awesome and really says a lot about your character sir wow strange interaction and it never <laughs> would have happened had it not been for you saying take the subway it's fun yeah so part of me was thinking if i was uh stabbed in a crime of passion as i was talking to him that kind of would have been on you i know that's awful that's terrible um but the but good news you, is i made it to the airport know, plenty of time you know your way and you can do that anytime Take the rocket, instead of spending Instead of spending $70, right? Although at that moment, I would have spent $140 yes, to be in the safety sure. of an air-conditioned taxi. No, absolutely. But you're absolutely right. It was a hot tip, and I'm glad I did it. And uh, I was actually it, thankful to have that experience. And I didn't even have to pay option. more for the rocket. Do you know that? Yeah. No, no, no. You just, it's the same. That, the beauty of it is... Uh, because I, you know, you take the airport and you think that's the only way to get there. And if you're ever in Toronto, that's 
a super easy option like you, tons of people do it and it's three bucks as opposed to seventy dollars in a cab guys be careful in the sea and take the rocket to the airport see it's learn yeah. entertainment on Tiger and torrents it's not Fantastic. just a couple of guys talking about stuff we'll take a break 81 rolls on we have a fun new game called reno or bino coming yes. right up you don't want to miss it where's my beer chair and we're back are you doll finished I'm doll finished, and that's the dolphin with his, with his buddies. Like I love tourists. <laughs> he sounds eerily like the crunch, crunch, crunch guy. He, well, I mean, that's that's <laughs> the crunch, crunch, crunch of the of the ocean guy for sure, man. The crunch, crunch, crunch of the dolphin. His world, and we're just living in it. He just goes Caligula on on tours. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what it, what that experience is like for the dolphin. Like, look, a, a wet, shiny thing. He's just like a some greasy like maniac like at the end of the night. Imagine. He's standing outside the brunny and his friends are trying to put him in a cab and he's like, No, I'm not done. Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> not done yet. Get out of here. And shows his friends, right? And oh my gosh. <laughs> Where's Alex? I I don't know, oh. there's tourists in town. He's probably He just went into that park. <laughs> It's like the liquor dome in Halifax when there's a boat in and the whole city's crawling with semen. No. Yeah, that, what? women that live here lose their minds. American what do you sailors. Mean they lo- I mean, like a they certain stay type of inside? Gal. Or they well, go, they love it? They love it. Really? Yeah, and the sailors wear their whites to the liquor dome just so they so stand out as being semen. I know, but that's like insane because all they want, what's well, like, I want to, I want to have a baby and watch this guy disappear for the rest of time i don't know if it's a baby but i think it's um yeah just maybe wheels some dad a boat full comfort. of wheels dad that's what it is <laughs> whatever floats your boat it's the mike nelson <laughs> navy move those um those american <laughs> seamen are like dolphins and the women here are like tourists they just pin them yeah, up against the I- dock and then disappear I think I think I got a couple kids up there, eh? Always that line. Yeah. But here's the thing. I got a kid. Let's be very clear about the fact that the women that partake of that know exactly what they're doing, right? They, yeah. They dig it. They know what the stakes are. As long as everybody knows what's up, who am I to judge? But not the uh, dolphin. We're not talking about that. No, because there's obviously a language barrier. <laughs> The dolphin couldn't explain or understand. Although, even though the dolphin doesn't speak English, you'd think he would understand protest. That's prob. That Ouch, could be protest, stop. though. That could be because you know they say oh, their brains are so big. Maybe that was just that dolphin saying, "You guys keep fucking with the ocean." That's what this is going to be right here. So it was a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, quit messing with the ocean, bod. We'll do it to every one of you. You're giving the dolphin a lot of credit (laughs) on a hearsay anecdote from several years ago. He grabs him with his fins, (laughs) pins him up to the dock, fires seven liters of butterfly laughter into this guy's shorts, (laughs) and then splits. It's like an ABC after school special. You know how dolphins yeah. can rock on their tails or like they can back up 30 yards? This like, is for fucking with the reef, Bob. Th- that's what this guy did forwards. Like, <laughs> like pinned him. But imagine I like... I how he went from villain to hero too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> imagine you're standing on the dock watching with your children though and your face turns from, oh, this is adorable to, oh my yeah. gosh, he's in real trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you got lots of air in that tank, eh? Help me, please. Someone take my hand. Bop it on the nose with your fist or something. Oh, wow. I think if you're under dolphin attack, like dolphin attack is already a phrase that that I can't even wrap my head around. But if you're under dolphin attack, bop it on the nose must be the move, right? Bop it on the nose or poke its eye. So it's eyes water. Oh, man. Wow. It's 1981 and you've lined up some 1981 jams. Yeah, but with a twist this time. Hit me. 1981 jams, but we're going to play games of scenarios with salesmen. Love it. 
different kinds of sales ish types. Okay. And we can start it off with uh, these songs are the soundtrack to their sales pitch. <laughs> well, sometimes like, well, we'll start it out with the uh, like a the real crunch crunch type guy at at like the future shop or something. Gross. <laughs> right. Do they have Future Shop in 1981? <laughs> uh, it would be Radio Shack. Then. Yeah, Radio Shack guy, for sure. <laughs> the Radio Shack. Okay, so I come into the Radio Shack to buy something, and this song is playing, and you're the guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's, but he's like, you know, the sales guy, so he's telling you what you want to hear on the radio, even. Love it. Okay. Hey, how, how you doing there? How's things? Um, things are fine, thank you. Those are nice, uh, no, nice glasses here. You, you like this radio? Uh, yeah. It's, is it a clock radio? Because I'm like looking for something. Do, 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 I mean, uh, you know, if you if you know if you know music and you know good rock songs, you can uh, pick up pick up girls. No problem. Okay, I'm actually happily married, um, and a woman. Check this out. Wait Just now. stand here. Put your ears right here. What are you doing? Why are your hands on my waist? I'm just asking you to just listen. Listen to that sound. I mean, it does. It, there's no question. It sounds good. Yeah. Have you ever heard this kind of fidelity in your life? What? What do you mean fidelity? Fidelity. It's something that's it's just been invented. Listen to it. It's like that's fidelity. Listen. I get the sense you're more interested in infidelity, and I don't know if that's my scene. What's your name, sir? Um, Vanessa? Vanessa? Yes, my name's Vanessa. It's hard to tell that I have long eyelashes with my tinted glasses, because it's anyway, 1981. Vanessa, listen to this music. Just picture yourself on a Saturday afternoon if you really want to relax. Do you really get a chance to relax? If I mean, this not was in really. your house, if this was in your house, you could sit down. Have a coffee, have a have a cold drink. But think there's a, a whole other layer, a whole other option to your life to connect, to be happier. How you can how have this can you sound. tell what makes you think I'm not happy? You can be happier. The sound in your house. Imagine this, fidelity. In the comfort of your own home, Vanessa. I mean, what, but what is, you keep saying fidelity, but what does that even mean? Okay, hang on a second. Listen to that bass. Crunch, crunch, crunch. What, what are those, Tic Tacs? Yeah, would you like one? They're very uh, refreshing. Sure. Almost as refreshing as this. Can you hear this this high end here? This is a yes. Can you turn you know, the, the just turn the music off for a second? I can't even hear myself think. No, it, uh, you could turn it down. I mean, sometimes there's a- ambience. You could uh, play some music quietly, and maybe you want to play some jazz if you're having some dinner with some friends. Bottom line is this could change your whole personality, make you much more bright person, happier. Uh, they're only sixteen ninety five. Um, do you know what time consumers distributing is open till? I think I'm gonna go down there. You know it's twenty four ninety nine there. And by this I've heard things, the way they ship stuff over there, you might not even get the proper speakers. These are ready to go. This is exactly how you would hear it here tomorrow night and or even you can walk home and have it in your afternoon. I think if you turn the music down you wouldn't have to be so close to my mouth when you're speaking. That's why I have the breath mints, baby. <laughs> crunch, 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 crunch. Gross. Oh, we almost went all all the way through limelight there. He's such a plaid panted perv. <laughs> um, I think with a, a little more time, she could have been coerced. Yeah. And I think what he read in her right away is that she is looking for a little adventure in her life. Yeah, and I think and that through her, she didn't know what to do with those feelings. He, he's like getting... He's trying to prove personality through a $20 radio. Yep. But there are some people like that that are are very successful in the dating arena because they can just 
see through people or at least run a game that makes it sound like they can't. I imagine you're quite the salesman if you might, would like to be. Me? Perhaps perhaps you can sell something in this next little jam. You know, sure. This is the rule, though. We were talking about <laughs> this last week. When you're selling something, if it's a yes or it's a no, stop talking. Because oh, okay. if it's a no, you're not going to turn them around. But if it's a yes, you might talk them out of it or give them more to react to that they don't like. Stop talking. <laughs> stop talking when you hear no. Or yes. Yeah. Either Or yes, exactly. Yeah. If it's okay. a no, stop talking because you're just going to irritate them. Okay, you ready? Yes. You are? Yes. Here's your jam. Your jam is uh, it's perfect for trying to sell something, too. It's uh in the air tonight if you need it and you're ready. Good to one. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Thank you for stopping yes. by my van outside the mall. Let me ask you a question. How much time do you spend doing housework in the run of a week? Um I uh I, I'm kinda in a hurry. Simple question. How much time do you spend doing housework? Four hours or more or less or more? Um, I really need to go. What do you have for a vacuum, if you don't mind my asking? You look like, uh, if you don't mind my saying, an Electrolux upright? Uh, a Hoover. Yeah, a Hoover. I used to use a Hoover, too. Then I became an adult and started making real decisions by taking the reins and control of my life. Let you me give you two words that are going to change... Never you mind you where I live. That? It's not about where I live. Where do you live? Uh, I, I, down the street. You live down the street. Probably in a bungalow. Probably in a split entry. Probably three bedroom. Am I right? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. And let me guess. Because of the Hoover that you use, are there dust particles floating in the air tonight? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, what I want to show you, if you'll just give me five minutes to earn your trust, what I want to show you is a central vac system. Vac being short for vacuum, central being short for nothing. Central vac. What, what does that mean? It's something that sucks the dust out of the air tonight in your bungalow. and means you get more time of your life back to watch. Do you watch Another World? Do you watch General Hospital? Do you watch Dallas? Do you I, watch I'm Knox Landing? Of, I don't... I like the days of our lives. Yeah, so you're going to get more days of your lives back so you can start enjoying the things that you really put on this earth to do instead of sucking dust bunnies up all over your house. How does it How does it work? How does it work? Very simple. Two steps. One, you give me your wallet. And two, I'll show up on Tuesday to install the central vac in your split entry bungalow. I don't think this sounds Hey, stop uh, for one safe. second. Stop for a second. Listen. Do you hear something in the air tonight? It's the sound of change. It's the sound of you leaving the Hoover of the past behind and getting the central vac of the future to move forward. Okay. Just repeat after me. I hate vacuuming. I hate my Hoover. Do it. I Say need it. to go. Vacuuming sucks. Say it. Say it. Sack, sack, vacuuming sucks. Didn't that feel good? Oh, can you turn that down, please? Can you it's air drum loud. along? Air drum along. It's Get your humbling. life back. You can take drum lessons with all the extra time and you're not using that Hoover to suck dust bunnies. How, you, are you playing, you know the drums? Yeah, I know how to play air drums, sure. You're getting it perfectly, actually. You're doing the whole song. How do you do that? Well, it's because I have a lot of time that I don't spend vacuuming because I have a central vac here at my... In your van? Yeah. <laughs> central vac. In Lives van. in his van for sure. He just starts airing drumming while he's talking to sell it even more. <laughs> when the drums come in. I love that he has central vac <laughs> in his van.
<laughs> She's impressed that he just starts air drumming with the tom. <laughs> It. it felt, I mean, Van is cultural shorthand for Perv City, USA. <laughs> oh, for sure. But in 1981, it was a different time. Selling Guess what Central I saw for back. sale near my house? There's a Dodge <laughs> There's a K car station wagon. Come on. I don't even remember them. How I don't the even remember not... seeing one before, but there's one for sale. How come it's not all rusted out? I can't imagine. This thing is mint. I know. It's weird when you see that. Like I saw an old Nissan, like those pickups from the early 80s. Remember Love those? it. Yes. And it was like there was no rust anywhere on the whole frame or anything. Or like, uh, was, was it with, a... Uh, Gary, Gary Gugatomy. Was it a Datsun? The Datsun had pickup trucks too. The, yeah, that. It might have been a Datsun. I might be, you might be corrected me there. I saw a uh, um, Fiero yesterday. I've been seeing all kinds of like those old little cars. Remember the Fieros. It was always like an arsehole driving one of those red Fieros. I'm afraid that's true. That was too much of a personality type right off the bat, right? Well, there was a um, there was a Corvette show in town yesterday, and I I think it's safe to say that nobody at the Corvette show was doing much to help beat the cliche. Yeah. There were a lot of magnum-looking, um, sleeveless tee, mustachioed dudes. Masks. Yeah, driving bird extenders. Remember that? Yeah, like Trans Ams and... There's hey, easy. Trans Ams are dope. Huh? Trans Ams are dope. Yeah, but not in 1984, man. Weren't they? driving one of those. Were oh, they always they were driven by skids then? Uh, or like Joe Vanelli. Yeah. Hey, Ma, can I have two bucks for gas? Yeah. Want to get one of those lights in the bottom? Look at this. Hey, Ma, there's a sale on louvers at Canadian Tire. I got a Brio fridge. Check it out. In the back, he's got six pack of brio on ice in the little cooler with a little cooler yeah hey take your shoes off before you get in the passenger seat pass me a janata hurry up <laughs> let's take hey. a couple birds out to the scarborough bluffs <laughs> don't worry officer there's no beer in it. it's just a couple brio janatas you want one this manja cake over here never had a brio <laughs> hey try and drinking it Look at he can't drink. Everybody doesn't know how to drink Brio. They got that same stupid face when they try it. It's like they're drinking some kind of cough syrup or something. Ha! Isn't it, um, isn't there a Miss Vanelli's pizza? Yeah. I wonder if it's any relish. <laughs> that would be amazing, imagine. Oh my gosh, hey, Ma, this whole, this whole time. pizza place is going off. You know what I mean? I see it in everywhere. The six inside of square one. Ma, you know what you should do? Your pizza's so good, you should start your own pizza place. <laughs> Gino and I would go there every single day. I mean, we do Gino, now. Come on, you can write a nice jingle for Ma. I'll play the piano. Boys, your mom's got plenty to do at home with you guys. She don't need to be starting her own business making pizza for other Goombas. I love how they're in <laughs> Canadian, but that sounds like they're from Queens. <laughs> and the mom never gets a word in edgewise. <laughs> no. Ever. Hey, fellas, let me tell you something real quick. Your mom don't need to be making pizza for other Goombas. I don't know why their S's she, are so pronounced. She just, she just like has that high voice and only speaks Italian. You the Italian is a morte de fame. Hey, Gino. Something. Joe, if you guys are going swimming in the lake, be careful of dolphins, okay? Is all I'm saying. This friend of mine got <laughs> dick docked. <laughs> hey, dick doc, you know what I mean? You can't have the dolphin squishing you, okay? Be careful. That buddy of mine went to Maui. Next thing you know, he's pushed up against the dock and he see the load coming all over him <laughs> from the dolphins. <laughs> his shorts were like the inside of his s'more. <laughs> Oh, Fired a milk dear. bag up his shirt. <laughs> hey, pass me three bags of milk. That's what it looked like in his shorts. These three bags of milk right here, except they weren't the bags. This is graphic. Yeah, it's getting out of hand. Somehow this dolphin's turned into <laughs> on every vacation. 
Hey, Dad, will you Forget take us to the land? Forget jellyfish. You don't want to Oh, you can't worry about no jellyfish, man. You get to pushed up against the docks. <laughs> what? You, <laughs> you're a piece of work. You want me to take you to marine land? Do you know what they got there? Do you know what the dolphins do to people? That's right. Sit down on the couch, watch some TV, we'll watch the CFL, and uh, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, we got to take a break here. It's oh, back man, we're segment. clipping along, bud. I know. 81 rolls on. Bra, bra. Crunch, 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 crunch. Thanks a lot, baby. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Crunch, 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 crunch. Oh, what do we have here? Hi, ma'am. I'm, uh, I saw... Can you turn the music down a little bit, please? Just step uh, inside for a sec. It's hot out there. I have an air conditioning unit in my window. Okay, man. You must be a... hot. Take your jacket off. Stay a while. All right. All right. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have these wonderful... I'll Not stop just, you right uh, there. Whatever you're selling, I'm buying. Fantastic. Do you, do you like world history? Do I? We could make some right now ourselves. Well, I have a scratching the surface to all the knowledge you could possibly want in one's life oh. under my arm right here. It's Why don't you teach me what you know? It's the Encyclopedia Britannica. The first first case. This is the ground floor to knowledge, ma'am. So, are you prepared to enter the ground floor? Uh, yes. Uh, do you like amphibians, or are you a science freak? I like dolphins. You do? Well, uh, there's a... Check out this this section on a, a, aquamarine culture. The way that the... Uh, look at how beautiful these uh, fish... That It shows you every type of fish that ever was, and it explains them all. If this, you, you show me here, your dorsal fin, I'll show you my <clears throat> blowhole. As you can see here, the the uh, the aquatic, the the way the aquatic animals got to get together, and and you find out uh, the, the whole history. <clears throat> uh, ma'am, <clears throat> can you can you can you stop Sorry. touching me, please? I'm just warm. Okay. Uh, could you turn the music down? I think a deep bit? down we're all animals, aren't we? Um. Yes. Uh. For sure, uh, animals too. I mean, uh, the history, uh, the populations of all of them, uh, the types. I mean, look at this cheetah. You know how fast a cheetah runs? What would you look like without those glasses on? Uh, <clears throat> Ma'am, I. Uh, it's a little more difficult for me to read without those. Um. <clears throat> you look like the teacher on Welcome Back, Cotter. Uh, yes, I. Uh, I'm a fan of Gabe Kaplan. He's a quite quite a good actor. There's actually a section on entertainment. Uh, you talk culture. too much. If you want to learn about television in the 20th century, it breaks Do you know it what right I'm really down. interested in? Is it's nonverbal old... signals. Stop talking for a second. Uh, Just uh, gaze right it, into my look balls. What do you see? You can, uh, you can, uh, <clears throat> you can, if you can, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you can see, you can see here, that you, uh, the whole chapters on not speaking cultures. Are cultures, you a ancient culture? Where did you get that belt buckle? Um, excuse me. I uh, please don't touch. Uh, maybe uh, maybe I should go. Maybe maybe this isn't a good idea. Maybe you should stay. Maybe we should shut the curtains and you can teach me every uh, single uh, thing uh, you know. That's not necessary. Let me, let me just. Uh, clearly, you're not interested in these encyclopedias. I'm I'm trying to sell these. So All right, get out of my house. Okay, have a nice day. Mark, you can come out now. He wasn't buying it. <laughs> it was like Mrs. Roper. She's trying to deal him into an unsuspecting menage a trois with her husband. Poor guy. Poor old classic uh, American guy. Mustachioed encyclopedia dude. <laughs> Married with three kids. Thanks. Good I had guy. a very strange experience with my friend Mark in grade 11, we went to Florida and there was a guy named Billy and his wife named Linda and we met them at the hot tub and they invited us in for drinks, which is already weird because we are 15. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And through casual conversation, I asked Linda what she did for a living. And she said, I'm a librarian. And they both laughed for about seven minutes. And we were like, what? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Turns out that she uh, removed her clothes for a living. And I uh. think wanted to um, give us a sample. And her husband really dug the idea of her doing her work in front of him. In front of us. Yikes. Yeah, all, of a you be- all of a sudden you just became part of a old school swinger household. Yeah, but the weird thing was the next morning was one of those like, did that really happen? And then there were um, three cop cars at their condo and we never saw them again. Like I think, thing- well, oh yeah, we do- Mark and I drove her to the liquor store because they wanted to uh, get some drinks, but Billy was too banged up to go. How old were you again? 15. My friend Mark That's, must have been 16. Yeah, that, like, what the hell? What kind of... You just caught in the fast lane for a few <laughs> I know, hours? I know. We were <laughs> staying at his sister's condo with her family, and it had one of those, like, common pool and uh, jacuzzi areas, and we just met Billy yeah. and Linda, and they were partying, and we were caught in the crossfire. That's crazy when that happens. Man. But it was one of those, like, we better get home to dinner, because we said we'd be home at 6. That's like the story when I, when, when my dad, I don't even know how, I was hanging out with this this guy because I was going to church at the time with my sister was involved with this church and I was going there a lot and this one guy was like a, into like baseball cards and stuff and I ended up like playing video. He's like, you want to come play ColecoVision? Because he was like a friend, a friend of my, of, of, of the family and lived nearby kind of thing. So I went over there and played ColecoVision a couple times, and then one time I was there playing till like three in the morning, <laughs> and he's like in the corner, like just listening to vinyl you breathe? records. Oh my god! <laughs> like on headphones. <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> and it's like this classic panel basement, and I'm like, not looking back now. I was like fourteen, thirteen, and he was like twenty eight or something. Looking back now, you're like, wait a I'm minute. I'm like, wow, right? Like, panel basement. He's listening to, like, Skinner albums or something with the headphones on. He's like, come over here, try the headphones. Not even, no. Just like I was playing the ColecoVision, he was over there listening to music. It's funny that the things that happen <laughs> as a that kid... Creepy, man? The things that happen as a kid, you're like, it's kind of normal at the time. But with the benefit of hindsight and some maturity, you're like, wait a minute. That was completely yeah. offside. And then all of a sudden, like, the phone rings, and it's my mom going, come on, it's three in the morning, like, come home, it's too late. I had a soccer coach when no, I was... No, it ain't over yet, <laughs> it's not over yet. What, there's more? <laughs> yeah, man. And then, like, she she, call, she calls, and is like, you gotta come home, and I'm like, nah, I, you know, I'm just gonna play, so I was playing baseball or something, so I had, like, another few, you know, I have her vision. the games were almost, like, normal length of a real game. <laughs> So I was playing more, and then she calls back again. I'm like, don't worry, I'm coming home soon. And then he, she, you know, say bye, and then he, like, leaves the phone off the hook. What? Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Like, lo- again, looking back, like, that's weird. But then being like, you know, whatever, he's just letting me play the game and not, doesn't want the noise or whatever <laughs> And then, and then all of a sudden, like within ten minutes, my the car a car like screams out front, and it's my parents. Time to go, bud. My dad running, pounding on the door, screaming like, "Get the fuck out of the house!" So did you realize in that moment, like, oh, I guess I guess they're really worried. I guess this is a little weird. Or was it yeah. years later? Well, it was just. Uh, at the time, I, w- I never thought it was weird, but looking back, I was like, yeah, they were, that was weird, and something, who knows what could have happened. But, I mean, that move of taking the phone off the hook. Whoa. Yeah. It sure suggests yeah. there could have been something untoward at play. For sure. It's like, come on, come see my baseball cards upstairs Ugh. in the bedroom. I had a soccer coach when I was probably 12, maybe 13. And he, on PEI, fabricated a tournament in Moncton and told the parents of five or six dudes on the team 
yeah, there's a tournament in Moncton. I'm going to drive them over in the van. We're playing in a tournament. I don't know how he pulled this off, but it was a camping trip. There was no tournament, and we were drinking. No way. Yeah. Imagine wow. how much trouble you'd be in if you tried to pull that now. Tell me that guy's not a creep fest. <clears throat> well, I, I, I mean, there were a few other things to suggest he was. Yeah. Um, like, I remember playing baseball, and our coach would always have a kid like with us traveling when I was traveling in the the OBA, the Ontario Baseball League, where tournaments are all over the place. And this, there was always a young kid keeping score, and like on some of the tournaments, that kid was staying with them, oh like my the two gosh. coaches, which were two guys. This one guy, Tom Carter, and his buddy Fran, I think was named from uh, Utica, and they were buddies. And I found out. Like, there was something super greasy about these guys. And then uh, I found out later that Carter was convicted. And no! He went to jail for well, great. that shit. Yeah. So when you're in sports, like, that's just... If you're weary at all, like, you, ha- it's, it, you have to be so, like, kind of careful. I can't believe these parents would let their kid travel with them, you know? Well, sometimes it's to- it, it's intuition, isn't it? Like, you, you can kind of well, feel like something's the, offside, the even kid, if nothing the, the, really yeah. concretely crosses the line. Well, the kid was just keeping score, and he was younger than all of us, you know? And But he was by himself. His parents wasn't even there for the whole weekend. He wasn't even on the team. Like, right. What kind of parent would let their kid do that? Well, that's pretty key, isn't it? Yeah. When I had my first place in an apartment building in downtown Halifax, I was probably 16 maybe 17 it was my second place and there was a judge that lived down the hall um this episode took a weird turn by the way there's a judge that lived down the hall and he said uh you have a two-bedroom right because my friend jason was my roommate and i said yeah and he said i've always wanted to see a two-bedroom uh maybe i could come see your two-bedroom sometime just to see what the layout's like and i was like sure judge no problem at all so uh I was walking down the hall one evening and he came out of his place in a bathrobe and was like, I'd love to take a look at that place. Which in hindsight, I was like, it's a yeah, bit weird. You don't think of it at all. Really. But I'm so I'm naive. Not. I was like, sure, come on down. So he looks yeah. through the whole place and he did a knuckle drag across my bird on the way out. Oh, man. And it was, it was um, innocuous enough that yeah. it could have been like, oh, sorry about that. But it was enough of a, what do you think? That he was dipping a toe in the water. And it wasn't until after he left, I was like, I think that knuckle drag was on purpose. (laughs) Greaseball. Judge. Probably knew, like, just exactly what to do as far as being just this side of the law. Yeah. Yeah. That's so greasy. But we have to teach our kids, man. Yell, kick, punch, scream. Yeah. That's, That's how it happens. Just so, like, chill and, like... You know, once they cross that line, yikes! Yikers Island, Yikers Island. And I we think have to change, change, we have to change gears, gears. But I yeah. think ninety-five percent of attacks are thwarted if the um, attack E is able to somehow muster the courage to scream, kick, punch, whatever. Yeah. That I should check that stat because it might have more to do with like mugging. Um. In any event, there you go. How about I'm the manager at Orange Julius, and you're, you're, I'm trying to get you to sell stuff. Come on, get up there. Well, I don't know if Julius I can do it. Julius is on. It's on sale. It's on sale for six ninety nine for a small today. Get out there and sell them. Tina, six ninety nine. It's 1981. That's a lot of money. Doesn't matter. This is, we're talking about butterfly laughter, son. Yeah, but who wants to spend six ninety nine on a small... Orange Julius. Just get out there. Here, put this shirt on. A superhero shirt? Just put it on. We're playing this song all day. This so- this show's huge. It's a hit. No one else is doing this, and we're going to sell Julius today. So it's like a cross-promotion with the greatest American hero? Uh, we are today. It's, sa- it's Sunday at the mall, kid. Like, you know who should be doing this promotion is Greatest American Hero across the way. They should be doing this promotion. We're selling butterfly laughter. Put this hat on. 
Put these goggles on. I feel like an idiot. Put this cape on and these boots. Oh my gosh. You, you didn't say anything about this in the job interview. Hey, you want that three seventy five an hour? Someone else could do it. I don't even think it'd be three seventy five. I was making two oh five when I started at McDonald's in nineteen ninety whatever. Eighty eight. Here, I'm gonna give away these I'm gonna give away these free samples here, look. These little caps. Hi. Once they get a taste of this stuff, you know, they they keep coming. Sir, would you like a small Orange Julius? Uh, it's only this is, $6.99. This is a cap. That's, I can barely have a sip of it. I I know, but I, once you try the delicious butterfly laughter, I think it'll be so infectious you won't remember the sting to your pocketbook. It's It's too sweet. You know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not working here anymore. Listen, if you don't sell it, I'm telling you, there's six other kids that would love your job. Look, right over there, there's a lineup. Look, Beside the orange, look. Gary Lake, for you, it might be easy to sell things, because you can obviously sell anything here in the early 1980s. You're going to go on to be huge in the world. But it's I'm just not cut out for this. Get out of here, kid. What a dick. He's got no issue with dusting him. I love that Gary Lake managed an Orange Julius in the early 80s. <laughs> yeah, and it was selling so much that he would do stupid things like that. He was crushing it. Hey, let's play Reno or Bino because we have a few minutes left in this episode. Oh, yeah. And I'm really excited about the game. Okay, we can do this 81 jam for two seconds on, in, underneath quietly as the game starts. Okay. Here's how it works. Okay. I'm going to read you a review. A partial review, a phrase from a review, and you have to tell me if it's about Mike Reno from Loverboy, or if it's yeah. a review of the anti-gas uh, medicine Beano. <laughs> this is so so ridiculous that I love it here. Do you know, that, and it should. Go, I mean, we don't know for a fact whether Mike Reno is gaseous. Let's assume he's not, <laughs> but unfortunately. I was thinking maybe we play true or false again. And I was like, oh, yeah. you know who we haven't played a game with is Mike Reno. So I, I needed yeah. something that rhymed with Mino. And unfortunately, Bino is the thing that rhymes. But it's going to be a surprisingly difficult game. You ready? Uh, yeah, but I love how deep it is. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yes, let's okay. get right into it. Reno or Bino? It was almost too long of an event. <laughs> <laughs> Reno or Bino? <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with Bino. That's Mike Reno. That's a review of a Loverboy oh, show. It's, it's Mike Reno. <laughs> okay. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you ready? Yeah. Within an hour, I was sweaty. Oh, my God. Reno or Bino? Oh, my God. This is insane. Reno? That's Bino. No! Oh, man. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. This might be my favorite game ever. Extremely loud. <laughs> oh, Wow. <laughs> That's that's oh man. Well, it's not easy. I'm gonna guess Bino. That's Reno. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Are you getting every single one just off? <laughs> um, I got one yet. Boom, boom. Oh my god! That's the whole review. <laughs> boom, boom. Uh, Reno. <laughs> that's Bino. No, <laughs> I failed. Perfect. Okay, oh, there man. are two left. I'm not oh, happy with no. the price. Reno or Bino? Well, that has to be Bino, no? Well, what if the tickets were high? Oh, my God. Is it Bino or Reno? I Guess. pick Bino. It's Bino. Finally. Okay, here, moly. I want you to really think about this one. Yeah. The sound was awful. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's unbelievable. The sound was awful. 
Reno I mean, or Bino? This could be I. It could be both. That's I'm what gonna, I'm saying. Uh, I'm gonna say just Reno. That's Reno. Yeah. The sound was awful. It sounds like <coughs> if, if you believe the reviews that you read, it sounds like Lover Boys maybe not sound checking these days. Oh my god! So it takes a few tunes for them to kind of land on their oh, feet. Oh really? Yeah. Is that the word on the street? Well, in the the message board you know that what I read, that is you know you know why? Because they're like flying to gigs with three months in between and like listen to maybe listening to a song or two on the plane there as opposed to practice because right. they're so good. They're just showing they're, up. They've done it so much. Yeah, they're just like oh, it takes a few jams. And Reno or Bino? It's a ratings. It's a game show sensation about to be sweeping the nation that was fantastic that's got to go on the board of games good chatting bot good chatting bot